Hey, what's going on guys? The Pesh here back with another video and in this video, I'm going to give my prediction on who is going to be the performance king in gaming laptops in 2023. Is it going to be AMD Zen 4 or Intel's Raptor Lake? So this video is going to be very exciting because I'm going to give my prediction based on facts and figures and yeah, stick around till the end. But before that, if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Also, link is down in the description to join the Telegram community. Guys, join the Telegram community, discuss tech with like-minded people, share your problems with others, share your solutions with others, and best of all, get notified on the best tech deals the earliest. I'm expecting to see you guys in the Telegram community. Alright, with that said, let's get right into the video. Before looking into the numbers, here's a quick recap on the actual products from Intel and AMD for 2023 laptops. So, AMD has their Dragon range and Phoenix range of APUs. Phoenix range 7040HS series goes up to 8 cores and is your typical efficiency focused laptop CPUs targeting maximum performance per watt. These CPUs will mostly be found in thin and light gaming laptops or budget gaming laptops and will compete against Intel's Raptor Lake 8 series parts which go all the way up to 14 cores. Then there's the AMD Dragon Range CPUs which is basically AMD's desktop chip with design Zen 4 CPUs crammed into big premium gaming laptops and running kind of like eco mode. These go all the way up to 16 cores and will compete against Intel's Raptor Lake HX series which go all the way up to 24 cores because just like Dragon Range, Raptor Lake HX is also Intel's desktop chips running under lower power limits. Alright, let's get on with the comparison between AMD Zen 4 Dragon Range versus Raptor Lake HX series of processors. And we're gonna take a look at comparison in Cinebench R23 multiple performance because Cinebench R23 in my opinion is the best case scenario for both AMD and Intel because Cinebench scales absolutely perfectly with thread count. Also do note that these processor scores may vary depending on the type of laptop it is in, the type of thermal solution that laptop has or the power limits set by the OEM. So these are kind of rough estimated numbers. So the fastest mobile processor in Cinebench in the laptop world for 2023 will be the 16 core Ryzen 9 7945HX, which is expected to score around 35,000 points beating the i9-13900HX series by 16%. Here's the reason. So AMD claims that the 7945HX is 52% faster than an i9-12900HX which generally scores around 23,000 points. So using simple maths, we can estimate that the 7945HX beating the top tier i9-13900HX by a decent margin, as the 13900HX series of processors scores around 30,000 points in Cinebench R23, depending on the SKU and clock speeds. Next up is the 12-core Ryzen 9 7845HX versus the 16-core i7-13700HX. Now we don't have leaked numbers for the 7845HX in Cinebench, but since we know that Cinebench scales almost perfectly with thread count, we can estimate that based on the 25% fewer threads and slightly lower clocks than the 7945HX, the 7845HX should score around 25,000 points. The 13700HX on the other hand is nothing but a rebranded i9-12900HX. As you can see, they have the same cores, threads, cache, and clocks. And remember, there is no difference in architecture or IPC gains between 12th gen and 13th gen. And so, the 13700HX should score around 23,000 points, thereby lagging behind the 7845HX by 8%. On a side note, we do have lead number for the 12 core 7845HX in Passmark Multicore, where it's trailing the 24 core i9 13980HX by only 11% while using only a peak of 75 watts versus 157 watts consumed by the i9-13900HX. So safe to say that the 16-core Ryzen 9 7945HX will destroy everything in Passmark Multicore. Now do note there is an i7-13850HX with 4 more e-cores. Not sure how this would scale in Cinebench, but it may just match the 12-core 7845HX. But we may not see this CPU widely available because this configuration does not exist in the desktop lineup. Alright, now coming back to Cinebench, we have the 8-core Ryzen 7 7745HX up against the 14-core i5-13600HX and it's a tie essentially. The Ryzen 7 7745HX numbers were leaked a few days ago in Chinese website called 
Bilibili, while the 13600HX is nothing but a rebranded i7 12700H as you can see from the specifications. The 6-core Ryzen 5 7645HX score can simply be calculated from the 25% lesser thread count compared to the 7745HX and slightly lower clocks. That comes around 14,000 points, which is decent, but nothing impressive compared to the 2-year-old 8-core Zen 3 9900HX or the Zen 3 Plus 6900HX. In my opinion, a 6-core Dragon Range CPU doesn't really make sense. Okay, next I want to show you an interesting chart. Since both AMD Zen 4 Dragon Range and Raptor Lake HX series parts are basically the desktop CPUs crammed into laptops running in lower power limits, how much performance do you lose when you run these CPUs at lower power limits? Let's take a look at it. So here's a chart. I have put all the desktop Intel Raptor Lake CPUs and Zen 4 CPUs against their power limited laptop versions. And right away, you can see that when power limited, Intel is losing a lot more performance compared to AMD, which is sacrificing much less performance when power limited in laptops. You can see that on desktop where there are no power limits and not much attention is paid to efficiency, Raptor Lake is actually a decent bit faster than Zen 4. But when power limited in laptops, Zen 4 generally comes out on top despite lacking in cores and thread count. This observation is well supported by Anand Tech's power scaling comparison between the 13900K versus the Ryzen 9 7950X, where you can see that the Ryzen 9 7950X loses much less performance at lower power limits versus the 13900HX which is losing much more performance at lower power limits. We also often see this in gaming laptops where Ryzen performs much better than Intel in battery power. Recently, Jared Stick compared the latest 24-core i9-13950HX versus the 8-core 6900HX which uses essentially a 2-year-old Zen 3 architecture. And on battery power, there is basically no difference. Just goes to show AMD's performance per watt is on another level to compare to Intel. Okay, now let's compare the more acquirable and sort of more practical AMD's Phoenix range 7040HS series with Intel's Raptor Lake 8 series processors. So here the Ryzen 9 7840HS Cinebench score was leaked in Bilibili and it scores just under 17,000 points. And there is another slightly higher clocked SKU called the 7940HS. And so overall, 17,000 points is what can be expected. These new 8-core Zen 4 parts are actually a decent 25% faster than the 8-core Zen 3 Plus parts from a year ago, while using less power as well. Now, this is compared against the 13th Gen 14-core i9 and i7 parts, which only differ among themselves based on clock speeds. They have the same number of P-cores and E-cores from 12th Gen, running at slightly higher clock speeds, and so overall, we can expect a 5-10% to boost compared to 12th gen, netting them an average of 19,500 points and beating the Ryzen 9 HS parts by 13%. Same applies when comparing the 6-core Ryzen versus the 12-core Intel parts where Intel is beating AMD by 11%. So it seems like yet another year when Intel's regular 8 series parts is beating AMD's HS series parts in multiple performance. But at what cost? Power consumption. When we take a look at the power consumption, the AMD HS series parts consume far less power than the Intel H series part. The HS series parts from AMD are built on TSMC's cutting edge 4 nanometer node and have a configurable TDP between 35 watts to 54 watts, but might spike up to 65 watts in certain laptops, while 13 gen parts can go almost double up to 115 watts. Guys, I always say that performance is already good enough. All CPUs released in the last couple of years, whether it is Ryzen 5000, whether it is Intel 11 Gen, Intel 12 Gen, 13 Gen, or now it is like AMD Zen 4, all these CPUs perform great. Performance is already good enough. I think that it's high time right now for the industry to focus more on efficiency, to innovate more towards efficiency. Like performance per watt should be one of the highlighting factors whenever a new CPU launches right now. Because in my opinion, Greater efficiency always leads to better scalability. So that's it for this comparison, guys. I do want to point out that these numbers may change up and down a little bit depending on the laptop configuration. It is like the thermal solution will play a great part and also the power limits set by the OEM. But I also showed you, uh, you know, scalability numbers, like how the scaling characteristics is between Intel and AMD when you lower the power limits, how would they perform? Also, I did not compare single core performance in Cinebench. That's because single core performance in both Zen 4 and Raptor Lake is great. You should be expecting above 1800 points across all the SKUs depending upon the 
single core clock speed. So basically, it should be the bottom line should be like most of these CPUs should be scoring at least 1800 points and depending on the higher clocks, it'll go higher. On a grand scheme of things, single core performance is already great on both AMD Zen 4 and Intel Raptor Lake. You will not have any problems with single core performance. It all comes down to the multi-core performance that is different between the two platforms and that is what's more important when we get into these high-end, high-performance gaming laptops. So that's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. What do you think about my analysis? Do you think it's going to turn out correct when all the laptops are launching and all the reviews will be coming out? What do you think is more impressive uh, in between Intel and AMD in 2023 in laptops? In my opinion, you know, AMD looks better suited for laptops and lower power limits based on their scaling characteristics like in lower power limits AMD is losing less performance and so in my opinion I think AMD's approach towards their uh, processors suit better you know in laptops compared to desktops I mean desktops is already great but it's just so efficient that it is able to scale down better in laptops so what do you think let me know guys and also make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications also guys join the telegram community yeah take care and I'll catch you in the next one peace